Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I don't think you should go down that road. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss The Road, which released in 2009, based on the book by Cormac McCarthy, with a screenplay by Joe Penhall, and directed by John Hillcoat. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Vigo Mortensen's character, Man. He has found himself in what appears to be North America during a post-apocalyptic situation and is striving his best to survive with his son named Boy. As the two of them start to make their way down the long road to safety, they have to avoid marauders, cannibals and just the deadly elements to try to help them survive. So apparently the director for the film had read the book before it was even published and mm. fell in love with it and knew that he wanted to uh, make the film for it. Yeah. And when the writer was hired to do the screenplay for the film, he was hired, I believe, because he said that he didn't need to change any dialogue from the book because it was practically perfect already. Yeah. Uh, and this was a book as well that uh, did spread pretty successfully by a word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd heard nothing about it until I was literally gifted a copy and told, you love post-apocalyptic you know, worlds, yeah. you should read this book. And I have to say, the, the book itself was a page-turner. Mm. I read it in, in nearly one sitting, and I probably would have done if it hadn't gotten so late. And by the time I put the book down the next morning, the film was out. You know, it was like such a quick turnaround yeah. and knowing uh, the, the themes of the of the book about basically a struggling parent looking after their child. The themes, I think, are pretty much universal. Oh, so, yeah, I think it had a mass appeal. Yeah, I, I was the same as you. All of a sudden this movie just appeared and people were like, Ian, you need to see the road. And I remember sitting down and watching it with some friends and... By the end of it, they were kind of bored on their phones and I was just fucking entranced by it. I mean, it was late. You know, I don't think they were in the mood because it's a pretty fucking depressive fucking uh, yeah. story. You know, <laughs> group of friends hanging out, having a few beers, you watch this fucking thing. Um, but, but what stood out for me was, you know, the visuals, you know, the acting, just every every positive element you ever want from a movie this movie gave me and this is actually only the second time i've watched it since it came out in 2009 okay i watched it and it just embedded itself in my mind and i was like Hell, i don't need to ever watch that movie again like vigo mortison is just so good you know this is this is post aragorn this is post lord of the rings but you know for some of us he's done so many other roles you know, before Aragorn and, and after, that he's just, when he takes on a character, he really takes on that character, and all of a sudden, you're not looking at Viggo Mortensen anymore, you're looking at the character he's made. Absolutely. The man. Yeah. <laughs> or we'll probably just refer to him as dad throughout, throughout the video, <laughs> yeah. but uh, Viggo Mortensen actually said he was due to take a break, and not retire from mm. acting, but he wanted a long break. Uh, from from film until obviously this script came along and he got heavily invested in it and would actually take a two-year break from acting in film after the road probably to recover as well yeah because he threw himself into this part he starved himself in pre-production during production uh, so that he would feel you know that starvation yes and he would slowly start to degrade and he also the you know the prop clothes that he's in he stayed in them he slept in them yeah. he made them his own so that he was engrossed in the world and in the character he was in reportedly to the point that when he went into local supermarkets or stores he was kicked out by security because they thought a homeless person <laughs> had wandered into their store yeah it's just like that's yeah so uh, he wasn't necessarily method acting but he really wanted to engage with this part and make it as authentic and believable as possible. Yeah. As the movie starts, you know, the world is already dead. We don't know how. And I think that's one of the beautiful mysteries of this movie is that... It's not important. No, no. I mean... For me, it kind of is. I kind of want to know because it's such a fucked up world. I'm like, 
what has caused this? You know, we've got we've got boats in the middle of roads with no water. We've got fire laced the whole you know horizon like it's napalm. You know, like and this is nearly a decade after the apocalypse. So yeah, it's like it's ongoing. Yeah, it's like things still haven't quite totally died yet. You know, he he mentioned something like uh, it being an earthquake. Yeah. And he was like, well, that's probably the least of our worries in this day and age. <laughs> it's like, oh, my. Uh, but then we, we, we find out that we're almost in like a dream state where he's flashing back to his home life. Where, yeah. You know, he's looking after his horse. He's looking after his wife, his yeah. pregnant wife. Yeah. Uh, until we get that shock where he wakes up at night, looks out at the curtain and there's like an orange light. Yeah. And then he's rapidly filling up the bathtub with water, which you know is one of those emergency reactions because you don't know when the power and the water's going to cut, get cut off. Yeah. And the panic ensues until, you know, he keeps getting jolted awake when he's right next to his son again. Yeah. And we keep getting those intermittent flashbacks uh, throughout, throughout the story to kind of remind you of well, life before. Yeah. And also because even though Charlize Theron's character, mum, isn't in you know, the main narrative flow. We realize she's not there when he wakes up. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a constant reminder as to what they've lost and, you know, as also serves as the drive for where they're going on this road. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was great when I was looking at the notes that um, Charlize Theron had read the book and wanted to put herself in the role, you know, as the mum. But they also greatly expanded her character as yes. well to, to yeah. give it a bit more uh, backing. And I mean... I love it, but I also fucking hate her as well. She plays it so well that, you know, one moment they're they're dealing with her pregnancy. You know, we don't know how long they stayed alive after we saw them wake up. All we know now is that she's given birth. And then the next flash that we'll see later on in the movie, like the boy looks about seven or eight. So, I mean, I could be wrong, but they've at least been there a couple of years still in the house. And she is suffering with depression. She's suffering with, you know, postnatal problems. She she hates the world that they live in. And she's questioning about, like, about taking her son with her. Like a, a joint suicide thing. You know, there's the scene where she's like, there's only two bullets left. We were hoping for three because, you know, then I could kill myself, kill the boy, and then you could kill yourself. And it's just like, what are you even thinking? Like, like, like I'm a parent, but I don't know if I could actually kill my child like that but then again it's like, a sweet mercy yeah at the end of life on yeah, this planet where you're horrible to think you know like you you might get killed you might get eaten or probably both and worse yeah and so to spare your child that horrific end with a quick bullet is a mercy uh, but it's a horrible thing to even contemplate. And the fact that this mother character has been contemplating it for nearly a decade, mm. you can tell that, you know, her life, well, life has no meaning to her anymore. And no. that's what she's contemplating. Like, it's not just enough to live. There's what, you know, or sorry, to survive. Because there's nothing to live for anymore. But All of our neighbors have killed themselves but, as well. But that's it's the way to out. That's the mistake that she's also making is that the child is what they have to live for like you know taking away taking away that child's life is almost as horrible as just not feeding him you know just let you know oh well the world's bad and i don't like it so i'm going to kill him because i'm hoping that he'll go to somewhere better it's like you don't know that this is this this is this is life this is now life the earth has moved to this stage now and so the emotion in Viggo Mortensen's face as well is the dad where, like we said, we keep flashing back and he's teaching his son, you know, they're sleeping in the car, aren't they, um, near the tunnel. And that's when we first kind of see some marauders uh, come up in their truck. And these guys have got guns, you know, they're killing people. They're taking everything that they can because they themselves just want to survive. And we don't know what they have been through or what they have had to do or had done to them that now they're grouping up. I mean, we've, like I said, we've all seen Walking Dead. Like, do you join Rick or Negan? You know, which one's the better kind of scenario? But it's such a tight sequence. Um, I mean, we have Garrett Delahunt um, playing one of the uh, marauders who kind of walks off to take a leak. And dad and son have already escaped from the car and made their way out into the woods and they're watching. And dad's only got these two, still the two, still two bullets that they had. And he's, he's, you know, he, they have this face off confrontation and you know 
that the that the the the, the marauder is he's just going to kill them you don't want to kill them you don't want him to kill you but like i said this is the world that you are trying to survive in now and so when he has to fucking blam in the head because he's kidnapped the son and he's ready to fucking slice his throat i get emotional when he's when he's sat next to the river yeah and he's washing the blood off his face and he's like i'm not gonna let anything happen to you nobody's gonna kill you it is a really, really intense scene. And Garrett Delahunt is oh, a amazing. superb character actor. And when he does the, you know, just come back with the boys. It's going to be fine. Just get in the back of the van. And he does that grin. Yeah. He's just like, oh, you're so full of shit. You know? And of course, we saw, like, one of the other guys on the back of the truck moving. And he's missing half of his leg. And yeah. I was like, do they eat his leg? Like, even though he's part of the posse or whatever. Like, they're still eating each other. Possibly. It's probably how desperate things are. I will say... Uh, the film does a really good job depicting mm. and establishing these are cannibals, these are bad guys. Yeah, yeah, totally. With, without uh, needing to show it in extreme graphic detail, which if you, so I should let you know, if you ever decide to read the book or not yeah. read the book, the book depicts some of the cannibalistic acts and shows some of the slavery uh, that's going on. Uh, in And of course, your imagination is much more graphic in its details than the film uh, decided to not not shy away, yeah. but not, but felt like it didn't need to didn't gratuitously need to. show, but suggest it. Yeah. Um. So so. Um, but I think that works on the strength of the actors that you believe when they say like they're gonna you know eat you and rape, rape you, you and kill you in whatever order they choose on the day. Yeah. You know you you believe it. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say as well the sequence where he's uh, with his son in the river. Um, apparently when they were filming this, conditions were freezing cold mm -hmm. and they, they promised the boy, like, you're going to do this and we're going to do it in two takes and you're going to be fine. Mm. Obviously on the second take, the sun came out and uh, that ruined it because they, they needed to make sure the yeah, sun didn't yeah. appear at all throughout yeah. the film. So they made him do it again. And apparently the tears and the sobs and the cries during the following improvised then sequence was, was real because yeah. the boy was in tears He's but in vigo cold, yeah. stayed in character played the dad for real pretty much yeah. and kept the scene going and i guess quite a few of those little happy accidents i guess kind of you know uh, continued throughout the filming uh, because everyone was so involved in what they were doing and so it just made for those precious real moments when the actors were exhausted tired and yes. beaten yeah they, they they just knew the characters so well that they could just have those little moments which comes through on screen so well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Cody McPhee playing the boy, like he, he's so good as as this child actor in this horrible situation because, you know, like he he doesn't want to just be broken down and crying all the time and being dragged around. He believes in his dad. He loves his dad. Was he? he just keeps calling him Papa, Papa. You know, and just every kind of scenario they get into. Like, the dad is doing his best to help his son and keep him alive. But at the same time, he's he's two seconds away of fucking ending his life. Like we said, that the, you know, the dad doesn't want him to get caught and be traumatized and hurt. Well, there was that... I thought it was a fantastic sequence early on where they're going past, like, a giant barn area. Mm. And they decide to go inside to scavenge for food. Yeah. And they see a bunch of corpses hanging from the yeah. rafters. Yeah, and yeah. Of course, dad, man, is just like, this is a you know usual sight really yeah whereas the boy still just like wants to just touch them make sure it's like he's kind of confused by it still doesn't quite understand yeah all he knows is they've gone to a better place maybe maybe he's, you know that's where mum's gone but it's again just underlining that uh that the you know the the end of all hope uh, yeah whereas for strangely you're kind of hopeful for these two characters that don't seem to have completely given up yet. Well, that's that's it. The, the dad hasn't given up. He wants to save his son. And so like I said, that's why that's why I kind of hate the mum character because she didn't she didn't care about the dad and she didn't care about the boy. She really did, really just cared about herself, which I know is a mental health issue, but I don't think she cared about anything at that point. She just it. wanted it all to be over. I did, did, but that's not the way. You know, like I said, luckily the film the film doesn't dwell on that too much. It, you know, we, we don't need... We, we focus so much on the father and son relationship that you kind of forget you don't know what 
has caused the apocalypse and you you don't know what's making all the marauders and robbers and cannibals go around and do all their things the camera is just literally just focused on these two characters and visually i i, I love just everything they're walking down through i mean i think uh, john hillcote did absolutely his best to convey this post-apocalyptic wasteland with I mean, obviously, you know, I don't know really much about special effects and stuff like that, but it's like, you know, what is CGI? What is matte painting? What well, is just well done practical effects? They went to a lot of real world locations mm. where natural disasters had occurred, right. such as flooding or fires. Yeah. And so they got to walk around these actual locations and go, OK, this is kind of exactly what we need to match mm. in the film if they didn't already just film there. Uh, but... The CGI, they mostly CGI'd the skyline right. because they yeah, needed yeah. it to be consistent yeah. throughout the entire film, which yeah. was, you know, no sunlight, always gray, cloudy, yeah. and always that grey tone over everything. Yeah. So uh, that's mostly where the CGI work came from. Well, that's it. It's it's like ash, isn't it? It's yeah. like there's ash in the air and then there's ash on the ground. That's because everything's burnt. Everything. But then it's like, what? Burn it? Did the sun go supernova? Is that why there's no sun? Is there, I think it was there, probably a volcano you know? or a comet of some or, size. Yeah. But then, like I said, the film doesn't dwell on it enough. It just says, look, it's happened. Let's just follow these two characters. And like, well, I should just say, you were, we, we are following these two characters. But the reason being was that that was mum's last words. Mm. Go south. Go south. No, no, yeah. We don't really know any particular reason. You know, it was just that she just gave them a purpose before she left. Well, she did. She did say, didn't she, that they weren't going to survive another winter in that house. Yeah. Um, and so to move south, and Dad even says that if we move south, it's a lot warmer. We hopefully. But we'll even survive. though they end up in frozen, a frozen wasteland on the way there, so I'm like, well, how cold is it back if they'd never left? Yeah, like it's getting real bad. But you're right about the landscape shots, like we when they're walking down that the the, the road, and you've got all the telephone poles. They're just yeah. like skeletons, basically, in the road. Uh, yeah, just all the destruction, the debris, the Abandoned fallen cars. down buildings and cars. Yeah, uh, that like that tunnel where the the marauders were. Uh, it is all just very visually evocative. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes the two characters are not even talking and the music is doing oh, the talking yeah. for you. And yeah. it's very dreary and moody. Uh, and it gives you time to watch and reflect on the imagery that you're seeing whilst you connect with these two characters who yeah. you know who who we watch get slower a starvation takes them they have that really sweet moment where he pries open a vending machine and oh, gives him can the coke. can of coke oh yeah there's a bit of a continuity error there with the can when he gets it's horribly dented but when he's drinking from it it's totally fine yeah and oh, it, so i wonder how many cans of coke they went through i was gonna say and well, as soon as he opened it shouldn't it have gone Psh! Well, all up in his face. <laughs> I don't know. With it being like nearly a decade old, like, I'm pretty sure it, it would have been. Yeah, it would have been like like oil. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, they apparently they filmed that sequence multiple times with a different can, branded can every time. Right, they're like, right. oh, there's no way Coca Cola are going to let us have it. Yeah. Because uh, in the book, it's a can of Coke. Right. Uh, so apparently, Vigo went. Oh, hold on, it. Hold on. Uh, we're not going to keep filming the scene with different bottles or cans. Yeah. It's going to bring up Coca Cola. <laughs> hey, it's Viggo Morrison. Yeah, yeah, the guy from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we want to use a can of Coke in, in this movie. We can? Oh, great. We can use a can of Coke. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. Nice one, Viggo. Thanks, Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the most horrible sequences, though, really hit home. Like, they, they, they come across a house um, and they make their way inside the house, which, like, I love the fact that... He, Dad doesn't just leave the kid around somewhere to hide and then go and search the place himself. He's always got the kid with him. He's taken him into the house with him. And they they come across like a, a, a padlocked cellar door. Um, and they prise it open and they go downstairs to look for food and things like that. And I mean, the boy has kind of looked around at certain things outside as well. Like stumps with huge axes in and huge blades. So you know something nasty is either happened or been going on and then when they get down into the basement you just find like all these emancipated prisoners half-eaten prisoners oh my God. <laughs> yeah men and women maybe even children you can't really see very well because he's only got a tiny little uh, like match lighter that he's using but dad then realizes oh fuck you know 
th th these guys are like eating these people. This is their storeroom. Um, and so they rush out to try to escape out of the house and the people come back. And so he takes the boy up the stairs. They go into the bathroom. You got what? Noses and ears and all this other shit in the sink, you know. So as much as he's trying to protect the boy, he's actually inadvertently brought him more and more traumatic things to fucking see. And, um, you know, they're trapped in the bathroom and they can't get out. And he's two seconds away from blowing the kid away. And the kid's just like, Papa, am I going to see you again, Papa? And I'm just like, no, no, fucking kid, for God's sake. It's horrendous. It really is. Uh, but thankfully, they've riled up the prisoners downstairs. Yeah. And a couple of them have smacked up through the floorboards or through the latch to try and get out, which causes a bit of a ruckus and a moment uh, for, for man and boy uh, to make a break and get out of the house. Yeah. And then they have to wait outside, don't they? They they, they, they can't run too far because you've got two guards there. One of them's got a rifle. So they've literally just on the outside of the house. And then they're falling asleep. It's night time. And all you can hear are the screams coming from the house. He has to cover his son's ears. Ears, yeah. You know, the, you're just hearing whatever they're, they're fucking killing there. I mean, when he wakes up and they're still sleeping, I, I maybe it's just me, but I would have probably gone and burnt the fucking house down with them all inside just to get my own back. Uh, but I get the fact that he just literally picks up his boy and he's just like, let's go. It's safer that way. Yeah. I think, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the other sort of moral dilemma running through the film is that, you know, uh, man is teaching boy to carry the fire yes. inside him. Yes. And it's up to you really to kind of figure out what, what that means. We're the good guys. Uh, but that is guys. what he is trying to cement in his boy, that we are the good guys. And uh, almost everybody that we come across are the bad guys. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's kind of a bit of an easy way to put it. It's just, you yeah. know, it's black and white that way. But that's when we have some of these other interactions that come along throughout the film where we realize, like, the boy is innocence and mm, purity yeah. uh, and kindness to strangers is coming through, whereas dad will also see that as uh, as a weakness, uh, as, a, as a liability that will get his boy killed considering how dangerous everything else is. Yeah. But it's it's also like I said as a as a parent you you don't want to take the innocence away you know dad kind of sees that he knows he can't like he can't just kill everybody that he comes across he he has got to kind of talk his way out of situations he has got to try to 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 make some kind of friends I mean we have this great moment where they they come to a house um, and the person inside has died. And they, they cover up the body. Not like They must have just died in bed or suicide or whatever. And when they go outside and they go to leave, they come across a bomb shelter. And it's one of the most heartwarming moments in probably the whole film. I mean, there's another It's the I moment of about. reprieve, isn't yeah. it? It's just like they've got a break because they, they, were, only, got a break. they were looking in the mirror not too long ago. Yeah. And they're like, look how skinny we are. Yeah. You know, so to have this this moment, you know, where they've got food for years, yeah. medical supplies, it's warm. Yes. You know. And uh but uh, so yeah, you know, they they share the, they share some meals together. Yeah. You know, he opens up a bottle of Jack Daniels. They get to wash <laughs> yeah, themselves, clean do. themselves. Yeah. You know, like like they they've made it. Yeah. They're going to be okay here for at least a couple of years. But during the night, you can hear a dog barking hear somebody yelling yeah and dad knows you know next day we're out we're taking everything we can and we're leaving because if there's somebody nearby they may have seen us they may eventually see us and it's not going to be safe yeah and they, they can't just stay in this bomb shower forever i mean it's only tiny they need to they need to like still go outside they still need to exercise so you know it's uh, like it's a false heaven i suppose you know here's god like like you had that moment where i suppose dad had kind of prayed you know like he was he was crying vigo broken down was crying because he just wanted a fucking break he needed something and now they found all this food i mean there was a wonderful sequence where you know, like I said they've they've had a wash they've they've cleaned dad's kind of cut his beard down a little bit shortened his hair put on a little suit for himself the boy's got little clothes on and they're there just enjoying this amazing meal he's smoking a cigarette he even says to the boy like i see i bet you i i seem like an alien from another world to you yeah you, you know? can imagine that it's a great oh, it's line isn't so it so great yeah so fucking great you think i come from another world don't you 
But yeah, due to the the noise that they heard, they know they've got to get on the road again. Yeah. Uh, and it's not long after before they see a stranger just a little bit a ways down the road. Oh, man, yeah. Just stumbling along. And uh, the confrontation, they're just like... Well, the, the man starts throwing his belongings at... Oh, sorry, old man starts yeah, throwing his belongings man, yeah. at man and boy. Like, just take it. I haven't got anything. Haven't got you nothing, take yeah. it. And uh, man's just like, well, I'm, I'm not a thief. Like, I don't want your stuff. Have yeah. it back. And uh, and they just want to move on. But boy is just like, but dad. We're, we're the good guys. Papa, we're the good guys. Let's feed him. You know, and they share a, a can of uh, a fruit with him. Yeah. Which he ends up vomiting some of it up. Yeah. Uh, but they invite him back uh, to have dinner with them for one night. Fucking Robert Duvall. Robert Duvall is almost unrecognisable here, but he delivers such a gr- such a sweet, innocent role here. Yeah. You really believe that he has been through some shit yeah. in this last decade. Yeah. And again, he uh, improvised this whole sequence where he talked about having a son oh, who just man. gone. And that was because, again, the actors were tired and cold and they were just in character while the cameras were rolling and... I just, it's beautiful magic happens. Duval playing Eli, he's just he's got because he's he's got cataracts or he's going blind, he's going blind or whatever, yeah. and he's just staring off. And Vigo says to him like, you know, what happened to your son? And he takes a moment because you can you can tell that Duval is kind of reliving it. Yeah, memorizing it. You know, did this boy die before the apocalypse? After the apocalypse, did he have to kill him himself? Did he? It was, did he watch him die? You know, like he even said, wasn't it? Like, I'm 90. Does that work getting you out of trouble? And he's like, no, I still get beaten up. And he, he says to Vigo, he's just like, I don't want to talk to you about it. As you would probably not want to talk of it either. Yeah. It's like, God damn. It's like, oh my God. And then the next day he's just gone. He's, you know, Eli is just walking off and, and man and boy are walking off in their own directions. And like I said, I, 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 I get, a lot of the people's mentalities in this movie of the position that you find yourself in. But this 90-year-old man is just fucking walking, you know. If he can do it, there is in no, there, there isn't really any need for all this horrible other shit. That's just selfishness of people doing whatever they want to survive. This old man, God knows how the fuck he survived. But he's just, he's just going um and and man vigo's character finally gets the boy to the ocean because that's where they've been aim- aiming for kind of to well see. that's they 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 had no promise that there would be anything there a light at the end of the tunnel yeah yeah and when they get there there isn't anything there isn't there's nothing it's just gray water gray sand gray sky so that's almost at that point where you'd abandon everything you're like there's nothing here either like, but it, but it's still a surprise to the boy because he hasn't seen any body of water this big which, I mean, Gary and I were discussing this before. Like, we have both different ideas about how this world has been made apocalyptic and all that. Um, but I, I kind of go with a theory. And we know that Vigo's character has kind of been dying since the start. You know, well, he's had a he's, progressive cough. Yeah, and you know, like, he's he's starving. He, he's not doing well with his diet and things like that. Maybe he's got, you know, liver problems, kidney problems, all this other stuff. He's just, he's literally using his last few days that he can to survive, to show his son, I need you to survive as best as you can. You are, you are hope. You know, the, the boy is just hope for whatever kind of future. And so when they get to the, the ocean... Um, dad sees a ship out there and he goes for a swim now I kind of theorize I theorize that there's something wrong with the water I'd like there's no way the ocean would stay natural in this in this world for for a long period and so dad decides he's going to go swim out and check this ship um, we don't actually see what he sees in there we don't you know we don't even know how really long he's he's in there for he fucking literally swims out there and we, see, and we see somebody coming down to the beach, seeing the boy um, underneath his camp. And then dad's coming back and everything is gone. The boy is literally just there on the beach on his own. I mean, that was a, another sweet point that we actually did miss as well, is when they came across that waterfall. Oh, yes. And they'd gone yeah, for the little yeah. swim Again, it's, it's just the little moments, you know, because it's like something bad happens to them, something yeah. worse happens to them, then there's a little break. Yeah. And then something bad happens, and something worse happens, and then things get really bad. <laughs> yeah. Where all of their stuff's been taken, like all the supplies from the bomb shelter, yeah. gone. Yeah. Their trolley of stuff, gone. All their everything, 
taken. Yeah. Like dad ends up picking up boy and they and he's just with a haste as, as fast as he can go because you can see how sickly he looks yeah, yeah. as he rushes back down this road uh, only to see this this also very slow moving person carrying their stuff who when they catch up to them just immediately surrenders it. And this mm. is where man gets a little bit brutal with him because he forces him to strip down oh, yeah. including his boots oh, and then leaves this. him yeah. as he intended to leave man and boy yeah. whereas of course the boy is just like dad this is wrong this is horrible i know he robbed us and took everything but doing this back is is also wrong yeah uh, and it's only after enough time has passed that man understands his boy and allows him to drop off the the clothes, the, the, the clothes and Some leaves food. a can of fruit there yeah. with him as well. Uh, and so whether whether that guy ever comes back and finds his clothes... Man, I love... Or wanders off and dies. I love Michael K. Williams. I yes. think he just acted so many great fucking roles in Absolutely. his lifetime. And just seeing, like, kudos to the guy to just stand there with, hold, with his hands on his junk. Just in freezing pleading, cold. Yeah. Just pleading, don't leave me like this, man. You're doing me so wrong. But I, I, I get it from Dad's point of view. You were going to leave us exactly like that. And the guy's just like, yeah, but I didn't kill the boy. I could have easily killed the boy. And I'm thinking, that doesn't make this fucking shit any better. You know, you could have at least waited. You could have sat there. You know, Dad is so paranoid as well that people have been following him this this, this whole time. And he's doing everything he can to... You know, like I said, how how much shit have they seen on this road? We only know this segment. You know, how long have they actually been on the road since they left this house? You know, what is he at to have done? Has he has he killed any other people without the gun, with with other weapons? It's just your mind boggles. But you know, they leave Michael K. Williams. They take all the stuff. They drop the stuff off on the ground again. But he's he's just shouting, "Hey, hey, yo!" You know, just but. There's nothing. There's, there's nobody there, and then as they're making their way through this kind of little town neighborhood thing, they they come under fire from arrows from a window. Somebody's firing arrows from a, a bow and arrow, and Dad takes one of them to the leg, and he'd already recovered a flare gun from, from the tanker, from yeah, from the ship when they'd gone out swimming, and so he manages to crack the guy right in the fucking chest. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hear the screams, so we yeah. don't see it until he rushes into the building, still dragging his his wounded leg, and yeah. so we see the fire on his chest. And the woman's just like, "Oh, we didn't, we didn't know you uh, were following us." Exactly. Yeah. It's like we weren't following you. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we'll just be going now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you wonder how many times like good people just open fire? Does that make them bad people? I... Does it make them confused, scared? Like I don't know. With, with man. They have, how many of these have already been picked off by cannibals? They thought they'd come back for them, yeah. And so a mistake was made. Yeah. Like it's just a harsh, brutal, cold world. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so we get moments like that. Yeah. And then they they manage to make it down to the docks or another beach, don't they? Another large yeah. body of water, and Dad just can't go on anymore. He's he's dying. He's fucking dying. And um, they kind of just settle down on the beach, don't they? And it's just so heartbreaking to know that, like, like they've even said it with Robert Duvall. How would you ever know you're the last two people alive? How, how would you, you know? Wouldn't, you would you just wouldn't. be. You would, you would just, you would just be. And so here they are on the beach. You know, Dad's having the last few words with his son because he knows he's not got long. He's literally just gonna die. Um, and and boy is boy had already brought it up before like I wish I, w I wish I was with mum and dad's just like well you you want to be dead and the boy's just like yeah and dad's just like don't think like that but then when he's dying the boy's just like I want to come with you I want to come with you and dad's like you can't you've got to stay here you've got to keep the fire going with you know this, this, this is what I've worked this is how what I've survived for to keep you or to at least before. teach him how to survive. Oh, he tells man. him to do everything that they did on the road Don't in the rest of his crying. life. Uh, but that's it. That's it's 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 the really sad moment where in the middle of the night, you know, boy is fast asleep and yeah. man is laying there and he's just crying. Yeah. You know, and it's the last moment we share with him as an audience because he's crying because well, he knows he's going to die, but he's crying because he knows he's going to leave his son in this world and yeah. there's nothing else now he can do to protect him 
and uh, and then we cut to the morning, and yeah, it's a really heartbreaking scene where boy mourns man, dad, yeah. uh, and it's and he must yeah. stay with him for a little bit because like the body starts to take on a really grayish color, so boy yeah. just won't leave his side. Well, he eventually does because we we stay with him right up until he covers covers him with the sheets. Yeah, 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 uh, and ready to to now move on yeah um but that's when he's approached by another stranger and you're just like part of you is just like i totally forgot this this bit i, oh. I totally forgot guy pierce was in this fucking movie right well yes because he's turned up for the end of the ending scene yeah yeah and uh, and he asks him uh, a couple of questions and they're both trying to uh make sure that uh, the other is not going to kill the other and yeah. that they're not cannibals yeah and uh, he explains like i've got the fire inside me do you yeah and guy pierce is like what you're a bit strange yeah i uh, know i've got the fire in me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy why don't you why don't you come with me because in a way like guy pierce and his family have seen dad and boy go in and so they've been i don't know hoping to hook up work together you know hoping that the boy's doing well whatnot film doesn't go into it we don't need to know don't dwell on it whatever but the the fact that like like he, he brings the boy up to his family and the mum is just so welcoming like you know we've even got our own little children so i'm looking at the like i look at the children and the girl's thinking fuck another boy <laughs> you know? and the boy's looking at you know main boy and he's thinking shit am i gonna have to share my shit with him <laughs> and guy pierce is like Ksh, ksh, let's rock, you know. <laughs> I love the dog. The dog's just oh, oh, the such, dog. a yeah, such, such a good boy. Such a good boy. Oh man. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, you know they. Uh, it's hopeful in a way. You yeah. Know? It's it's sad that that the dad is is gone, but he he's got his son here his son and here. has passed him over almost to a welcoming family who look like they've been through this hell for the last ten years and still remain together. Still remain They're still together, fighting, yeah. and they really are. In essence, they must have the fire in them yeah, too yeah. Uh, to keep going. And uh, and and it, it, the film ends on a freeze frame uh, of boy. It does uh, as yeah. it fades to black into uh, into credits. Uh, and now I will say, if uh, you know, most people obviously credits are rolling, film off, done, right? Yeah. But uh, with a film like this, you it, you kind of want to linger. But as the credits oh, are going yeah, up, you okay. kind of want to just pause, like have a moment, just. Let the whole film wash over you. Yeah. And then, as the credits are rolling and the music kind of fades out, you hear birdsong. Really? You hear children oh, laughing. No way. And you're like, oh my God. Like, it's almost like, you know, we, we saw in the film, like, they find a bug, a beetle that flies they do. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, that is a sign of hey, life maybe returning. Life finds a way. I heard that once. Exactly. So yeah. it feels like the sun is going to break through the clouds any yeah. moment, especially when you hear just that little bit of audio. It's like, it's going to be okay. We're going to rebuild and things are going to work out. Like, wow. I'm sure more horrible shit happened. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. Uh, but yeah, it, it like, just let the credits play out. And like, just the audio alone will, uh, it just eases you back into reality a little bit. Because, yeah, it's a bloody depressing movie. They should totally make Road 2, Fury Road. Oh, well, I'm guessing that's where Charlize <laughs> Theron went, actually. <laughs> yeah. She met up with Mad Max yeah. when she went off into the abyss. <laughs> I just hope she avoided any fucking crashing spaceships. Should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ian, did you have any favourite scenes from the road? Oh, man. Like, the movie is just one almighty fucking long favourite scene. And it's, it, I know it sounds strange to say that because it's so dark, depressive, grey and things like that. But visually, it's impressive. The acting is so impressive. The relationship between dad and boy is so impressive. I absolutely love the sequence with Robert DeVal. I mean, I think he's a fucking amazing actor and he just conveys another survivor in this story to dad that like we hadn't met many other people up to this point. So then to finally actually sit down with somebody who's been through this shit, you're like, oh yeah, he's been through some fucking horrible shit. Um, I mean, I love the sequence with Michael K. Williams. I think he was an outstanding actor as well. Um, and it's just credit to him to be able to stand there in the freezing cold, holding on to his junk. You know, it's just <laughs> fucking, it just imprints in your mind. Um, it's not a favorite scene, but it certainly is memorable. Is that fucking basement sequence? Where, you know, you want all these people in this house who've been doing this to die. But then at the same time, it's, this is how they survive. I mean, I, I, 
I don't want to dwell on it too much. I love the bombshell sequence, especially when they're sitting down and he's smoking a cigarette and having a Jack Daniels feeding his boy. You know, if if the dog hadn't come along, they'd have lived there forever. They'd have, they'd have, they'd have built something on top of it so nobody would have looked at it. They would have maybe have farmed the land. Maybe they'd found other people. I, I, I don't know. It's just an amazing movie. Yeah, there, there are so many uh, favourite scenes. But I just want to go back on that and touch on that a little bit more mm. about... Because it's like, uh, he obviously, he feels like he's being followed the whole time. Mm. Every every time somebody encounters someone, they're like, you follow me? Why yeah. are you following me? Why are you following me? And uh, it, it almost feels a bit like paranoia. Yes. Uh, to yeah, an extent. Totally. Yeah. However, it's at the very end of the film that we find out that this family had been following them the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. just like... But because obviously it was the dog barking that disturbed man enough to want to leave the bomb shelter. Yeah. And of course, when we see the dog at the end, we're just like, so this was the family that whose paranoia caused him to want to move and leave. Yeah. When really, like they all could have had that bomb shelter together because they were they worked essentially together. good people. Yeah. Um. But uh, so it's but it's also. Just like all the scenes with uh, Viggo Mortensen's portrayal of the man where he's kind of optimistic at the beginning. Yeah. But as the film goes on, he gets more and more downtrodden and beat yeah. to yeah. the point where he's almost teaching his son, you know, he's teaching him the, the fundamental survival tactics, how yeah. to deal with people. But of course, the, the son knows that what his dad's sometimes doing is wrong. You know, and uh, yeah, and it all comes down to the mum, and that's why I think the scenes with Charlize Theron are very oh, yeah. strong yeah, in I the think film. Good too. Uh, and where he has the scene where he's got the picture of her in his wallet yeah. that he ends up throwing of the wedding ring and the wedding oh. ring that he just pushes to the side because he still can't quite get over it, push it off entirely, <laughs> but he is still trying to shed everything about her uh, so that he can move on. Yeah. However, then. For the rest of the film, he's still following her last, you know, directive, which was to go south. Yeah. So even though he shed himself of her, he's still following it's, her anyway. It's like when he it's, found the piano. Yes. Yeah, because he had chopped up the other one for firewood. Yeah. So it's all those moments. You're like, it's so layered. And Vigo's performance is so intense. He has so much... Uh, emotion in his eyes yeah uh, so even when he's not saying anything his body language is yeah so yeah any scene with with him in just not not even saying anything just looking is, is incredible yeah. okay but first favorite scene i would say <laughs> uh is probably uh, the first barn that they go past and you see the body swinging there mm. uh and uh, and then it's the scene right afterwards where he reminds his son two bullets gun mouth trigger squeeze yeah uh and so yeah it's like we're not 15 minutes into the film and he's teaching his son how to blow his brains out. It's just like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, we've still got another hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> oh God, I hope he doesn't have to do that. Yeah, you know, Jesus. So. <laughs> I, I kept, when he, when he showed him that, I flashed in my head to Planet Terror where she gives the boy the gun and then yeah. she walks away and he actually shoots, shoots himself. himself. I was like, can you imagine how the road would have been if that had happened halfway <laughs> through? God. I also really like the the two encounters uh, with with the with the men on the road. Yeah. Uh, the first one with Robert Duvall's old man Eli, and then the other one with Michael Kenneth Williams, the the thief. Yeah. Uh, both those encounters, both uh, both very different stories, but yeah, I mean it's a series of encounters along the road essentially, and those two really really stood out for me because I think their performances were were so strong. Yeah. You mentioned it as well. Yeah, the fallout shelter, just that moment, that candle lit dinner. Where he's having a drink and a smoke with his son, and just just a, a chance for those characters to relax, and you as yeah. an audience to relax yeah. a little bit too. Yeah. yeah, the basement of the cannibal victims, as you said, it's you only see them for about six seconds, but it's uh, enough imagery to tell you everything that you needed to know, and yeah. uh, it kind of sticks with you. So yeah, not a favorite scene, but yeah. a shocking, like memorable one for sure. Ian. You recommend the road? I fucking highly, 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 highly recommend this movie. I mean, personally, um, I believe if you are even thinking about becoming a fan of film and wanting to have any kind of intelligent conversation with people about movies, the road is on that list. I mean, we can talk about films every day, come and go, but certain films stick with you hit you on multiple levels hit you with emotions before you even you know where you didn't even think you had that capacity to feel that and i know i i know people who have looked at the road and gone i'm not watching that it doesn't look very good and i'm like well then i can't talk to you because you don't know what good is on this this movie is dark it's depressive it 
portrays a future which is probably more believable than many apocalyptic future films out there and it doesn't even tell us how it does it it literally just gives one actor and another actor a shopping cart and says walk down this road and see what you encounter and it's just fucking amazing oh yeah high <laughs> recommendation <laughs> from me the Road is a must-watch film that has been expertly adapted from McCarthy's novel, delivering one of the most haunting depictions of a post-apocalypse on screen. It's a bleak and harsh and believable world, with very little remaining humanity as strangers are likely to kill you, eat you, and worse. Yes. It's highly depressing with its subject matter, a constant reminder that death is ever-present and considered a luxury in such misery. It's not completely hopeless, though, as man and boy carry the fire south past desolate landscapes, scattered remains, and while enduring the hostile weather, they keep a spark of humanity alive and in each other. Viggo Mortensen and Cody Smith McPhee were both outstanding here, showing incredible range in subtle and powerful ways, conveying every raw emotion for us to feel so that we connect with them on this harrowing journey. The entire supporting cast were equally fantastic and memorable, adding a lot of substance and grit to each scene, elevating the whole film. The cinematography by Javier aguirre Sarobi perfectly frames the ruined wasteland in tones of grey and death, which is married well by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis's melancholy score, punching home that thought of, what are we surviving for? Mm. Are we still the good guys? So, yeah, this film hits hard. It's brutal and bleak. But it's very well made, has some outstanding performances backed with a strong central universal theme of parental love. That makes the film resonate so, so strongly. In a moment, the whole world was changed forever. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Thank you.